I'm Mike Shrews. And I'm Timus. And you're listening to The Monster Cast. Episode 46. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Monster Cast, the podcast where we watch and talk about the monsters. I am, of course, your host, Mike Shrews, here with my co host and friend, Tivis. Tivis, how are you doing today, my man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Awesome. We actually have some time today, man, like, yeah, unlike last week. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so today, guys, real quick, before we dive into the show, uh, check us out on all social media platforms via The Monstercast, or go to themonstercast.com, where you can find all of our content, videos, blogs, articles, podcast episodes, all that fun stuff over at themonstercast.com. Definitely check it out there. And you can also find us on YouTube via the Monstercast YouTube channel where you can check out our pretty ugly faces all the time, every Monster Monday. Um, you can also email us. We've, we haven't been doing this one. You can also email us, though, at themonstercast at outlook.com where you can, um, you know, just let us know what's going on. Let us know any anything uh, Monsters related or if you would like a shout out. Things like that. Just let us know. Um, you can also go to the monstercast.com and leave us a voice message there as well. So definitely do that. Um, there's a little icon on the side. You just click it. Leave us a voice message. We can get you on the show if you want to. That way, if you don't have time to actually sit down with us and talk with us about the monsters, we'd love to hear from all of you guys out there. Um, especially in the comments, we we love reading the comments on YouTube um and seeing all the stuff uh via twitter and facebook and everything like that so we really appreciate that and uh definitely get involved with that if you have not done so yet already um it's a great community actually just on our uh facebook page alone with all the different monsters fans out there and and it's awesome to see i know you know facebook is for what do they call us boomers i guess but you know i don't care i love facebook it, it's the best thing for me <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy to not see what you don't want to see if you really don't want to see it <laughs> right right um anyways you can also like i said find us on facebook instagram and twitter all via the monster cast and uh instagram is where we post most of our photos um, i'm starting to do some uh video like messages and things like that there you can uh find us all over there as well um, and then you can also go to Apple Podcasts if you have Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Like, cause I know most podcast services don't let you leave a written review. Some do, some don't, but I know for sure Apple does. We like to read those. So just let us know. Um, leave us a review of what, how you think the show's doing. Leave us some stars, thumbs, whatever the heck your platform allows you to do. And, uh, also, don't forget to pick up because today is Halloween for everybody listening out there. Happy Halloween, by the way. Happy Halloween. Uh, the Remind Mag magazine for October uh, has been released. The Monsters Mash uh, edition of it. And you can get your copy by going to themonstercast.com slash remind mag. Um, we don't get paid for that. We just want everybody out there to know about this. Uh, get in get the the book and everything else like that so definitely check it out um it's a good read uh has some interviews with mr zombie has interviews with uh mr butch patrick everything like that so uh check those out and um anything else that we're missing right now divis i have something to say okay uh, uh oh <laughs> So if y'all remember last week, I was on the Monster Hunters. Uh, mm -hmm. This week, I w took a trip over to Derek from that cruise show. Uh, that was great, wasn't it? Where we talked about uh, an episode of the Karate Kid cartoon. Okay. So if that interests any of you, please check it out. Um, we actually recorded this way back in September. So it's I've been waiting a long time to say it. <laughs> nice. Awesome, man. Well, that sounds cool. So definitely check that out, guys. Um, and hear Tivis talking to other people besides me because 
Yeah, You'll hear me fun. rambling about the show <laughs> because at the time our schedule was flopping all around as we were deciding how we were going to do things. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, when it gets to be talking about the show, I kind of ramble because I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome um also guys uh don't forget last week we talked about the documentaries we know it's not like necessarily something to really talk about like we said experience it yourselves go and check it out you can find it at the monstercast.com slash monsters box set um and there you have all the documentaries on that if you don't have the dvd box set already did i say derek i meant keith okay keith. it's keith's show okay all right um, and then last but not least, of course, go to themonstercast.com slash merch and get some awesome uh, Monsters t-shirts that are made specifically for you guys out there, uh, Monsters fans and Monstercast fans as well. Um, definitely check those out. And uh, that's all I got for, for right now. So, no, yeah. no, no, we're not moving on until you uh -oh. explain to the audio listeners what you have on your head. It's a it's a hat. I don't know what how to explain it. I found this when I was on vacation. It's um it says friends like friends the TV show for people who can't see, and then it has uh the the uh mystery machine <laughs> with um Jason and Freddy and Ghostface and Chucky and I, I'm trying to see what all's in the actual video that you're seeing here. So um, let me just zoom in real quick here. Uh, you have Leatherface. Uh, and there's a bunch of others on the other side. I can't see them right now. <laughs> so I'll be honest with you. It yeah. kind of looks like a popcorn bucket. No, uh, no, it's a hat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a hat. I picked this up when I was on vacation. Uh, I was I like, say, oh, it's I got to get a, this. a similar look to this, but not like metallic. <laughs> right um but yeah so uh just just go to our website everything is there for everybody who wants to get into it um today though i do want to let everyone know leading up to this episode we have been dropping videos on the monstercast youtube channel yeah. um which are like bts things for the product that we're about to talk about um which, which is, is tivis oh okay uh it is mockingbird lane all the right. 2012 failed pilot yeah um, or tv movie as they call it now <laughs> tv movie it wasn't a pilot it was just a made for tv movie special man what yeah we were thinking about, about making a show with it but that doesn't matter because we didn't yeah um which uh me and tivis have had a lot of experience with uh things that end up doing that they they just call them movies after a while uh such as mm -hmm. like uh um nick justice fury league, agent of nick shield fury. um uh what was it justice L league of america generation x and generation x yeah so uh been a fun one and this was a this was a fun or interesting watch we'll say um we'll we'll talk about it here in a second but yes mockingbird lane from uh, aired october 26 2012 as a halloween special leading into um grim so this was a time around the time that Grimm was popular. Um, you had Pushing Daisies, I believe, was actually done by the same guy who did this and uh, all that fun stuff. And yeah, it uh, it was in that time era of, you know, 2012, that's 10 years ago, man. I, I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it aired October 26th, 2012, as a Halloween special which, after NBC had already decided not to go forward with it. Which is actually interesting because we are recording this on October 26, 2022. Oh my God, we are. So it is literally 10 years from the day that it came out for us. So I'm sorry, you guys. That's why are, you wanted are, to record today. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys are listening to it a couple days, you know, about, almost a week out, but still it's uh it, it, it's definitely I I was like, "Oh yeah, let's just record today. Why not?" Um and do it 10 years to the date 
it, it's kind of interesting to do well not interesting but cool to do but yeah anyways the youtube channel has the trailer for this it had or the third teaser i should say it has a four different bts spots um that weren't released i don't remember where i found those <laughs> so don't ask me <laughs> and, <laughs> but youtube let me put them up so <laughs> that was a good thing and then uh bts promo uh which youtube let me put up as well it did get copyrighted but it's one of those things that's allowed now i did try to upload for you guys the actual episode itself like in three separate segments Universal said nope. <laughs> so uh, NBC Universal, they were like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. So that definitely is not on our YouTube channel. However, but it is out there if you happen it, it, to do the Googles. It is out there. But also, I am going to be putting a link in our Discord to where you can watch them as well. So if you want to get on to our Discord, just go ahead on over there. Um, it's, uh, you get to it by joining our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the monster cast. And, uh, you can go over there, join the Patreon tier. It's super cheap. And, uh, that's where we are dropping those. So everybody can watch them. If you cannot find them on the internet, definitely. Plus it's also a, a great area for us to all just talk about the monsters and, and what we love about them and stuff like that. So in any yeah. iteration, you know, because I know there's fans of the original, there's fans of the monsters today, there's fans of Mockingbird Lane even. So, you know, it, it would, it'd be interesting to get everyone together and just talk about it and actually converse and not argue. Because we see that a lot on uh, some of the Facebook groups, unfortunately. Yeah. So, oh. um, anyways, let's dive on into this. Oop. Uh, so, I know it's been a few weeks, but here we go. Uh this was written by Brian Fuller, who Mike will probably be very familiar with as he wrote two episodes of Deep Space Nine, uh, multiple episodes of Star Trek Voyager, nine episodes of uh, Short Treks, uh, was in the writer for American Gods, which is a, a Neil Gaiman uh, book that got turned into a TV show. Highly recommend anything Neil Gaiman. Uh, and also is the writer on Star Trek Discovery. It was directed by Brian Singer, who many will probably remember from his uh, comic stuff with the X-Men, X2, Superman Returns, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and it, it directed an episode of The Gifted, a mm -hmm. highly underrated TV show. Uh, also, he was uncredited as kelly in star trek a nemesis so he's done okay. uh, some acting as well right uh we got jerry o'connell as herman munster uh he's played Derek in scream 2 quinn mallory who is who i remember him as from sliders love mm. me some sliders yeah, uh yeah. he was not he voiced nightwing in the batman uh, he played George Cooper Jr. in that final season of Big Bang Theory. And uh, Jack Ransom in Star Trek Discovery Logs and Lower Decks. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got, who oh boy. Portia de Lucy. <laughs> Thank you, as Lily Munster. <laughs> uh, she played sorority sister Murphy in Scream 2. So we got a couple Scream 2. Uh, yeah. Alone. You know, people here. We got uh, she played Veronica Palmer in Better Off Ted and uh, Lindsay Bluth Funk in Arrested Development, which is her most recent thing. And okay, this is a reminder how I do these. These are just things that jump out at me. These people have done a ton more stuff. I highly recommend going check out their IMDb if you're unfamiliar with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Charity because you didn't even say Kangaroo Jack for Jerry O'Connell. I'm just she saying. was a Kangaroo Jack he's like the lead character oh my god it's been years since i seen that <laughs> i need to rewatch that now all right uh we got charity wakefield as marilyn munster who uh i know as lucy from the 2016 christmas special of doctor who the return of dr mysterio <laughs> okay uh which was their ploy to try and get into the superhero 
genre. We got uh, I'm Mason. Actually, go on. Oh, go, no. I was going to say, I'm actually surprised because you usually go into a lot of the comic book stuff, and Jerry O'Connell's done tons of voice work for comic book crap. Uh, yeah, no, I could keep going. I was trying okay. to cut the list off. At some okay, point. just making sure <laughs> you didn't yeah, miss that. No, I, I wasn't trying to make this extremely long like I did with uh, I, Munster Go Home. <laughs> I've I've been following him for a long time, so I, I know a lot of oh, his yeah, career. Yeah. Uh, sliders, <laughs> like I said, uh, that show is phenomenal. Oh, my God, I love Sliders. Uh, Mason Cook is Eddie Munster who played eight-year-old Jimmy in Raising Hope, another sitcom I love. Uh, he was Cecile Wilson in Spy Kids 4 and Corey in The Middle, another mm. sitcom I love. Uh, <laughs> shocker. Uh, Grandpa was played by Eddie Izzard. That's a hell of a name. Uh, he was uh, Bailey in the 1998 The Avengers, which is the British spy team not the marvel it's not iron man yeah uh he played roman uh N- N- nuggle niggle who who eddie izzard yeah he it was his character in oceans 12 and oceans 13 uh he played big oh um uh roman night N- 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 they don't There's really no say I, his though. last name in that i just know his roman I nigel had an eye in it Listen here, I don't make names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he also played Big Bad Wolf in Powers, which, if you don't know that, that is a uh, that was Sony PlayStation attempted to get into television back mm-hmm. in 2015, and that was their TV show, and it was actually really well done. But they decided it wasn't worth the cost and cut it early. Unfortunately, gotcha. uh, he played Kadia in the 2019 Dark Crystal. And Peter Sullivan in the 2021 Lost Symbol, which me and my wife watched that because she loves Dan Brown books. Oh, my God, that was good. Uh, fortunately, also got canceled after one season, but still a good watch. Uh, yeah. We got Shanae Jackson. No, that can't be right. Cheyenne. Cheyenne Jackson is Steve. Steve. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, who played Danny Baker in 30 Rock, Hades in the 2019 Descendants 3, and Put a Justice in the 2019 Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beth Grant as Marie, who played Miss Kettlewell in Child's Play 2. I know Mike here is a huge Child's Play fan. Uh, Alan C. Lou <laughs> as the real estate agent. Pablo Espinoza as paramedic who was in Star Trek Voyager as a uh, Ocampa. Craig Jordan as paramedic number two. Kenneth Ling as Billy. Dante Brown as Huey, who was Elijah Bennett in Community. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grant Venable as Martin. Eric Ozofsky as Wallace. Who This is his very first acting credit. Yeah, these were uh, the kids. They're, they're, yeah. A lot of them were little kids at the beginning of this. Yeah, J. Anthony Pina as Mr. Perez. Perez. What I say? Perez. <laughs> Pre- oh, it's Perez. Oh, the comic community is going to be pissed at me. Eddie <laughs> Diaz as Mr. Garcia. Scott Freeberg, uncredited as poorly named Jumper by ANDB. Uh, John Suicide Jumper. Yeah, I was gonna cut. Well, that how first would they part say out. suicide? He didn't commit suicide. That's why I cut that first part. <laughs> well, that's just stupid. We have to call IMDb out for that shit. <laughs> uh, IMDb needs called out for quite a few things. We got All right. uh, now. Here is a big one that I am shocked went uncredited, but I'm sure if this went on as a series, he would have been mm-hmm. John uh, Kaser, Kaser, yeah. uncredited as Tim. Now, who this is? person, who their career for, for Halloween, too. He's the fucking crypt keeper, my man. Like, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, he was also Gar in Star Trek yeah. Voyager. He voiced Ray Rocket and Rocket Power 90s kids. Uh, he voiced Deadpool in my favorite Marvel games, Ultimate Alliance. Uh, 
Yeah, his career is insane. Yeah. I can't believe he was uncredited. Go check him out. Uh, guy Perry is credited as the werewolf performer, and that's that's the so the guy who's in the costume. I'm assuming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. He he his uh picture looks like he should be in like Harry Potter. Anyway, it does. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's dive on into this, man. Mockingbird Lane for everyone, <clears throat> and I, I hope that a lot of people have seen this. Because it is definitely something to see, <laughs> I will say. <laughs> um, definitely, uh, as um, as our, our photo will most likely say, what went good and what went bad for this uh, pilot here. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Where do you want to start out? So this starts off. In, in a really weird way, because it just starts off with a bunch of people who aren't the monsters at all. Yeah, it's a in the scout camp. troop. Yeah, Boy Scout troop uh, going camping. Yeah, that just suddenly. Well, first of all, they're making fun of one of the the bigger kids for stealing food. Yeah, and then they all just get destroyed by a werewolf and. That kid that was chucked against a tree, no way is he alive. <laughs> I know they added in the owl because they're probably like, oh, we can't kill a kid in the first scene. Right. Uh, well, he, he was covered. He was wrapped in a sleeping bag. So I think that was their uh, padding for him. Yeah. They so, can try to explain it all they want. This yeah. is uh, they, they that kid was meant to die in the original script. I guarantee it. Uh, <laughs> I think all of those kids were should have died, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. Like the one kid that was talking shit at the beginning gets grabbed by the monster and like ripped in the, I was like, no way that, that thing didn't like tear him to shreds. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we get like a random scene of like all of them in the car, including the scout leader. And they're yeah. just like, where's the, where is this? Where, where's Eddie Munster? Yeah. And, and then you get a picture of uh, Eddie Munster finally as a boy butt naked in the bushes yeah. and i'm just thinking to myself even in 2012 you do not want to be a scout leader with a naked boy around you <laughs> yeah it's and they explain this to him as it was a baby bear attack which yeah i will give them credit for trying a little bit with the scene where it's like you know it was his first transformation he did he wasn't fully aware of what was going on so he didn't actively try to eat <laughs> right yeah and um uh, uh, then because of this incident they have to move which i thought was an interesting uh reason for them moving yeah um i'm i'm so we get this line from marilyn who freaky marilyn <laughs> she kind of acts a little like uh wednesday but with blonde hair um yeah now was this scene reminded me of the rob zombie movie a bit do you think he might he have tried to pay that? a little uh, homage to this mm, no i don't know i don't think so no i mean with her like knocking or going house to house and stuff like that and being like hey let me get this one here instead well where he's showing is like you know this one it gets the most sun on the lot and she's like yeah. that's not what we're looking for and then turns around to the condemned building is like i want that right that, which, that was very similar to the rob zombie scene right which this house that they have in this movie that the monsters end up moving into 1313 mockingbird lane oh my goodness like it is massive like yeah it is it's an actual this one you could call a mansion like uh so they do a shot in the daytime and it looked like almost like it was like a legit place like almost but then you get the nighttime shot and it looks all cg almost. and, and they crazy. explain it as uh a hobo killer lived there and hid yeah. bodies in the walls and stuff which we did see bodies in the wall in the original show when herman punched a wall once the skeleton popped out that was the uh, movie was that the movie? I thought it was also in the show. When I don't think that was in the show. I don't recall that in the show. It might have been, but I know that was in Rob Zombie's movie. All right. It might yeah. have been just... No, there was also... it. No, because I remember a black and white episode where that happened. 
Then maybe. Okay. I would have to go know exactly which scene. Um, but I love how the, the, the realtor's like, there may be dead homeless people in the walls. <laughs> and then Marilyn goes, then they found a home after all. <laughs> And I was just like, damn. Okay, yeah, setting the tone. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um and uh then we get them moving into the house and we actually get us the stairwell was appropriate. Like I, I like mm. that they did the opening stairwell um where eventually spot would be and stuff like that. So I, I, I like think that. Grandpa's labs also hinted to be down there. Yeah. Um, which makes sense that that would connect to the basement. Right. So basically like their whole reasoning for moving though was because Eddie attacked and he doesn't know about his monster uh weird even yet. though he knows about the rest of the family. Yeah. Like he knows his grandpa is weird and that his dad is made up of other people. Well, he also says that, you know, he he gets his like human side from his dad, like his heart and stuff like that. They they make a big focus on Herman's heart throughout the entire episode yeah. um and Which, uh oh, i was gonna say herman's introduction was real cool because i had him behind so, yeah, this uh thing. like lantern that made him look like he had bolts yeah yeah um but throughout the thing like even like eddie's like you know i, I i'm glad that i'm normal like Marilyn, you know and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah uh, they really do the opposite with this compared to the normal show where yeah Eddie like hates his grandpa and all the weirdness that comes along with that side of the family. Right. It's, um, it's different. Marilyn also seemed to be one of the freakiest characters, honestly, because oh, she's a straight up serial. Killer. She has to be a serial killer, or this one definitely is a succubus. Like no way in hell, she is not something in this in this uh, episode mm -hmm. here. Um, but and she then, did try to save someone's life, so maybe not. Maybe she wanted his soul for herself. <laughs> maybe she's trying to save the souls of her family <laughs> by trying to keep them from doing bad things. Um, we have a scene though at breakfast, and they have the Frankenberry cereal. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you catch the line? I don't remember if it was in the show or in one of the BTS clips. But he's like, and uh, you need to not eat this stuff, and and it's such a stereotypical, you know, crap because, uh, and it's Herman saying it because you know why why are you like this stereotypical, uh, offensive? That's what it said, offensive uh, material, basically. I don't remember it, it in like the that. behind the scenes, so it might have been in the show, but I also don't remember the line. So, okay. Well, I remember seeing the BTS and him saying it, but I didn't know if it made it into the actual episode. I don't recall if it was in both or not. That's um, great, though. Uh, but yeah, he was just like, yeah, it's uh, offensive material. <laughs> uh, offensive recreations or whatever it was. Because yeah, um, in this, in is just like, he's just Jerry O'Connell, but with like stitching everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> around his yeah, like neck. It looks like stuff. one of them chokers around his neck, which yeah. everyone confuses it for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the introduction to Grandpa and Lily, though, can I just say that was awesome because not many people care that vampires can become more than just bats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They can become swarm of rats, which is what Grandpa does. Yeah. And also a uh, uh, mist, which is how Lily gets introduced. So, so do you think in Rob Zombie's The Monsters, Grandpa turned into the rats and ate Orlock because he couldn't close the deal? <laughs> I think he, but you what? I think they moved before he could do that. Oh, okay. Anyways, um. <laughs> No, yeah, the, the transformation was great because um, you see him come out as rats in turn. Of course, he's butt naked. and uh, But then so is Lily. She's butt naked, too. Yeah, clearly she, their clothes don't change with them. Yeah, and she has, like, all these spiders come down and, like, weave her dress, like, in real time. It was actually a really cool thing. Like... I wonder if the reason they didn't continue this is because it would be so expensive to do. 
you know. Well, they didn't have to do it after the introduction, though. No, 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 not like that, but like just the effects in general. Oh yeah, no. If they were going to continue this, that that, those would be like reserved for either mid season finales or finales or you know first episodes only. Because because we even get a scene, you know, after Herman, you know, welcomes Lily back to the or welcomes Lily to the new place, then it's like sex scene basically where they just got done doing it and she does this really cool like she's on the ceiling and he's on the bed and they have her like transform to this dust and then come down and lay it next to him i was like that has to be so expensive to do after oh, yeah. so like for a tv show if they're gonna continually do it you know and i wonder if that's why they disregarded the makeup too because in this show they all look like people for yeah. the most part yeah. Um, and so if they for you know got uh, cut down on the makeup budget to go to the special effects instead, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't like that spider dress she made though. It was too close to uh, Morticia. Just white. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't. <laughs> I mean, um, there's gonna be yeah. There's a few things here and there. It's um, I, I I'll do my final words on like how I actually feel about this at the yeah, end. Yeah, at the but, end. Uh, so when they are doing the breakfast though, um, and the Frankenberry scene is there and all this stuff, we have this line about uh, no one should feel shameful except for Marilyn. Marilyn carries her shame, but she carries it well, <laughs> as yeah. Grandpa says. They continue to crap on Marilyn, and they continue, and she doesn't look different than Lily. I'm like, what do you, what? Lily, <laughs> it looks better actually. Like, why are we crapping on her? I love the smug look that she gives them, though. Like, haha, yeah. you suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's like but this the house really doesn't get along. <laughs> It doesn't seem like they do get along because there's also a scene later too where grandpa finds out that Marilyn plans on staying and he's like, yeah, I I didn't think that you were going to (laughs) stay. I had to convince your mother not to eat you. (laughs) Right. But then I'm like, I'm wondering because he also talks about how he's going to start feeding again or drinking. He's going to start drinking again. He's going to start drinking again. Great euphemism there. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I, I wrote that down in my, my notes here. Um, but he wants her to, I, I'm a, I feel that he wanted her to go away because when he starts drinking again, he doesn't want her to be a side effect of it because she's normal. Um, possibly. Maybe I didn't read that, but possibly, but, uh, but them talking about how he's going to start drinking again. I love that it's like he's trying to go off the wagon by himself, but they're using the word drinking as of the vocabulary instead of hunting or feeding, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Because it, it kind of keeps in with somewhat of the OG monsters where you're not blatantly saying it, but you're saying it, you know? Because, but because they blatantly say a lot of things in this one yeah (laughs) so so it was nice to see them not blatantly like put it out there um and uh yeah the house is just awesome i just love the house yeah that house (laughs) is fantastic yeah uh let's see i said it comes out it came out around the time of grim so it makes sense why they try to do it a little more darker because that was when like these shows were like popping off at the time i i want to get into the grandpa stuff a bit later but okay um i kind of like herman's problems you know he he gets he cares so much about his family it's actually putting strain on his heart Mm -hmm. and causing like stitching to go which by the way could have done without any of that didn't need to see the heart at all especially when he's getting it transplanted. I don't. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. He, well, at the end of the first act, so the when we watched these, they were broken into like 13-minute sections. Yeah. Um. 
So basically, end, each commercial break is where yeah, they each it. commercial break pretty much. So at the end of this first act, uh, Eddie goes off to school, and then Herman, you know, is broken hearted, literally broken hearted. Yeah, because they're they don't want to tell Eddie, but Eddie knows something's up. Yeah. Uh, so Herman ends up passing out from a broken heart, and um, and he wakes up in Grandpa's lab, where Grandpa's doing open heart surgery on him and put a metal heart in there and herman's like hell no give me my last original heart like i'm Which, wondering what he means by a last original heart or does he just mean like a heart that actually has the deep compassionate feeling because it seems like they they um yeah. hint towards that yeah i think it's he he wants a human heart right and, and i kind of this scene was great because it 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 shows grandpa's ingenuity with creating the whole weird steampunk heart thing for him right and also his kind of, it shows off this version's a little bit like disdain for humanity in general cuz he's okay. like why do you want this like you will be an unfeeling being like the rest of us with this <laughs> yeah and uh he he just uh grandpa also slips in the line there you know eddie was born a monster we were all born monsters you didn't become one until i made you one which makes me think that he's not a dracula in this one. Oh no he totally i will get to that oh okay <laughs> um actually it comes up after this a little bit uh, you want to dive into the grandpa stuff then yeah it comes up into my notes actually right after the uh the whole monster thing um, but before we do that, Grandpa is also, you know, talking about how he raised a werewolf before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't call him Lester in this one. They call right? him Leslie. Leslie. Instead of Lester. Um, but he was still mentioned as like Herman was like, Yeah, like look how fucking good you did raising your your werewolf. Like he's still yeah, a loser. You hired nannies. <laughs> and For then him let him eat. eat the nannies. <laughs> he's like, Well, why else would you hire them? Right. So yeah, like they they still have like the whole uh, Lester is kind of still like a, a myth. screw up <laughs> screw up yeah he he's not that great so although he seems to be making Grandpa proud in this version all yeah but I would also say like his screw ups in this version would be because of Grandpa's bad parenting yeah or lack thereof right right. <laughs> Uh, we, we get a bit of grandpa magic in this. Yep. Um, grandpa <laughs> goes, <laughs> he's like, we need to win over the neighbors. He starts walking away from Marilyn. Where are you going? I'm making cookies. <laughs> and she's like, wait, cookies, cookies. <laughs> what? Oh, um, I'm like, oh, that is surprisingly wholesome for this version. And then we see what he's actually up to. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he goes and makes cookies, uh, with his blood using some of his blood, um, and then he goes and gives the cookies out. And apparently when you eat his blood, you become like a zombie for him, like his slave, like yeah, an Igor, a ghoul. Yeah. Uh, but before they give him the cookies, this is why I'm saying this. <laughs> She's like, this is my grandpa, grandpa. <laughs> and, and, and then he's like, just call me D. So I'm assuming D is for Dracula. Yeah. So he, he also still has Dracula. the Dracula rules as well, because he's yeah. like, "Do you want to come in?" He's like, "Can can you form that in more of a? <laughs> can you say that again without it being a question?" No, no. He says, "Can you say that from your own free will without it being like, uh, yeah, like he's because because <laughs> Grandpa he already took the cookie and Grandpa knows he has power over him, so he kind of needs him to do it from his own free will." of not like under the control of grandpa yeah so yeah uh but then that's where marilyn um uh talked to her grandpa says he talked marilyn's mom out of eating her and um he wants her to go away so that he because because he's gonna start feeding soon and all that stuff uh blah 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 i'm trying to read through a bunch i took so many notes um uh, grandpa uses zero. Grandpa uses cookies to control people and needs the basic vampire invite to come in as a, as I said, it was kind of possible in the OG. That's right. Yeah. 
I said that Grandpa kind of there was some times where Grandpa wouldn't go into a place until he was actually invited in the original. So we started wondering if that was the same rules and stuff that we had because Grandpa never really walked into just houses randomly. Yeah. So who knows? Um Herman did. Yeah. He ate that family's Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, Herman's not a vampire. Um the benefits of our having, last Halloween. The benefits of having a Frankenstein monster as your son in law, he can just go in and get the people out for you. So you don't have to go in. That's probably what grandpa was thinking when they got married. Uh, and then there's this weird I don't know if you are we going into the scene with the deer next? Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's yeah. Uh, nice. uh weird scene with a deer where Grandpa wants to show Eddie the the cruel side of nature, where it's mm-hmm. like a deer out in the middle of nowhere. And Marilyn's like, maybe it's a suicidal deer, and then a, a like a, a tiger, or je- or like no no, it was like a mountain lion. Yeah, so, some kind of big cat jumps. They just called the it the lion, but it was like a mountain lion. Yeah, and it starts eating the deer and he's like the deer didn't seem very depressed and Marilyn's like no i thought i saw it smile yeah and the, in the background you just see grandpa just slot slide. not even move just slide out of the way like like, like an at like the the fucking things that are at the airport that just move you <laughs> along <laughs> like just slide right out yeah it's like well what eats the lion and then you just see like this giant bat demon thing, thing yeah. land on it start eating it and it's like Grandpa. Marilyn's like grandpa. <laughs> and then you get like after that. See? What does grandpa say? Because he says something to her. Oh, he's because he he's got his uh, vampire teeth. I don't remember. Or maybe he just makes a noise. like ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He just made a noise, I believe. Um, after that, you got Eddie talking to Lily. <laughs> oh, no, he's watched... hiding in the coffin, first of all. Which is awesome throwback to the original where Eddie was sleep in the coffin. You're like the movie. Well, that was the coffin that he was in. Yeah, but it's inside a dresser. Oh, okay. Oh, Which, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I watched Grandpa get naked and eat a lion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, why did he have to get naked? And, <laughs> and Grandpa goes off when Grandpa when they confront Grandpa about it. He's like, well, the lion was naked, so I just thought it would be fair. <laughs> yeah, and I forget was it Lily or Herman? It's like, oh, all right, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> With, yeah. It wasn't any verbal thing, but it was like body language. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. like that. Uh, but um, I-, I loved him talking to his mom because he's like, he's gonna start drinking again, isn't he? And she's like. Are- are you going to, you know, remain yourself? He's like, well, I am his daughter, but I will fight what mm. I am naturally for you. Yeah. yeah. And this that was a very you... nice moment. Right, right. This is where you really see that Eddie just, he does not want to kill, period. No, um, he actually becomes a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we uh, go back outside. Uh, oh, we didn't even mention when he was br- putting a heart in Herman. Like he was using an iPad. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like they, Herman runs on Mac OS because when he turns it yeah. back on, you get the Apple startup. <laughs> they show like this really cool electric uh, effect going on, but that's only just to power up the iPad <laughs> <laughs> that that gets him going on. Um, but then we'll go back outside after a while, and Grandpa's there, and he's using a feather on the iPad. <laughs> Just like using the feather as like a stylus or something. I'm just like, wait, what? Okay. Um, there's a, there's a few little kooky things in here that are reminiscent of like what an OG show would have done. Yeah. But it, and then he's like has uh the neighbor guy who ate the cookie, um being his blood slave. <laughs> That's what Herman calls them. He's like, you made blood. You made a blood slave. You can't make the neighbors your blood slaves. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and he, then, then what, the guy what happens? Painting the house pa- uh, faints. Yeah. Uh, from exhaustion, because apparently he's been doing it all day without any substance. <laughs> and his uh, wife, who is not happy at the family living in the neighborhood, mm. especially in that house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She makes that very clear when Grandpa visits them earlier in the show. Uh, 
she's there like i don't understand it he wouldn't even sweep the porch for me now he's painting some new people's house yeah it, well it, and their her big thing was they're living in a psychopath's house mm-hmm. and uh, i have an issue with that because we watched oh, something well, yeah, it's judging people well it's not just judging but like we watched something and and a, a death happened in the house not even a murder nothing yeah. And the house was still empty like four years ago. Like the people just abandoned it. I was like, that's a really nice house. Um, I don't care if someone died in there or not. Why did not, why did a realtor not be able to sell that house? You know? Mm-hmm. And, and the same thing goes for this place. I'm like, it's a giant mansion. Like if I don't care if hobos were being killed or not in it, like that house should have been sold some way, you know? Yeah, there's always gonna be some, even if it's not like to a person, but to the city, and the city turns it into like a museum or some shit. Now I know there are cases where they the cities have literally built bought properties like that and torn them down. Like I think most people have found out, you know, in certain cases of uh, other people lately. So but... assuming that this family is living in California still, yeah. Uh, they only have to notify you if a death occurred in the past three years. Okay. But if it was from something like say AIDS related, uh, they don't have to tell you at all in the state of California. Okay. And this definitely was California. I thought I saw the golden gate bridge behind the house at one point too. So they're like outside of San Francisco almost. Okay. At, At least that's what I got the impression. Like you see the red bridge behind the house at one point so i was like oh okay cool um not saying that's where the monsters always have lived but that gives some kind of like a a uh what is it a landmark there we go Mm -hmm. so to tell where this one is at because there's actually is a mockingbird lane and i was looking at some of the houses on that road and they're awesome (laughs) uh uh, it's not in california i can assume so the, the uh, ones I saw weren't in California. Get, getting back to what happened, though, when uh, the neighbor gets revived by the paramedics and she goes over with joy and grandpa's yeah. like, we had a perfectly good heart and you have to call the ambulance yeah. or the paramedics. Yeah, be, be, because before he passes out, they're talking about Herman's heart breaking, like how it's just going to give out and that's it. Yeah. And you need to find the replacement. And they look up at the guy and he's like, I'm not going to do that, blah, blah, blah. But before that guy even isn't brought into the question, Grandpa mentions the fact that the new Cub Scout guy's heart is just like Herman's heart, where it skipped a beat when Lily walked in the room, just like Herman. Oh, yeah, he's into (laughs) Herman's wife. Yeah. So um, that's brought up, and he's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to kill my you know, son's Cub Scout leader. And and then we're like, well, where's another heart gonna fall? From? Like, you know, hearts don't just fall from the sky. And that's when the guy falls off the ladder. <laughs> and I totally thought that it was just gonna be the end of the heart thing. But no, they the the heart thing is like run throughout it. And and I think it's because it's kind of like the heart of the show. You know? Yeah, what's... they're trying to show that there's Herman is still the caring person that yeah he always has been in every iteration. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think they, they pull it off with him and kind of him alone, but yeah, oh, we'll I think what they later. did is they hyper, like they, they <sighs> focused on the macabre. Yeah. 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 Well, there's some stuff from the BTS that I wrote notes on too from that, okay. but, um, but yeah, Let's so like the, the ambulance cup. comes and grandpa says the stupid line. So we haven't talked about the cub scout leader yet. Um, that, so Herman takes Eddie to his first meeting of the new troop that he's mm-hmm. in, and the guy's like, "Where's his uh his sc- his uh troop number?" <laughs> Herman's like, "It was uh you know whatever number it was." He's like, "Oh no, yeah, weren't they the ones attacked by the bear?" <laughs> he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, that's why we don't have it on him." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as as they did pretty good. I didn't think they were actually going to say anything. Uh, so. Because yeah. they they took it off of him so that he wouldn't remember supposedly, or that other people wouldn't bring it up to him. I'm assuming. Yeah, the other kids won't. 
pick on him or anything. It, but he gets invited to dinner later on in the show, and they're all sitting around. And I forget, I think Grandpa makes a comment about Marilyn again, and she's like, ha ha ha, she looks at the guy, he's like, he's going to eat you. <laughs> like, what? Or was it Eddie that said that? It's Eddie. It's Eddie that said was that. Eddie, it was one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marilyn, Marilyn just doesn't give she's not putting up with the stuff in this one like she she takes it but she, you can see that she's just like fuck you dude like yeah, you old ass is. guy what, what's I going on um uh, and in fact after that they're like uh she's like escort him to the door she's like you need to run <laughs> well before this too like during this whole dinner scene also the guy uh grandpa is like you know um open up your chest your heart <laughs> even open your heart uh because the guy was hitting on lily too which yeah well this is that's the thing is grant this was when grandpa was talking to the guy before herman was there mm-hmm. and was telling him hey you know herman's gonna die soon he, he, he his heart's failing him um, we find out later his heart's failing him because he loves too hard. That's why his heart fa- is failing. Yeah. He's going through hearts so fast because he loves too hard. Um, but he's always, he keeps telling this other guy, you know, w- w- we need someone to take over once Herman is, you know, e- extinguished. And he's, that's when he says, you know, open up your chest, your heart. And uh, I thought that was a good word gag for them to do here uh sort of reminiscent of the og but not uh, entirely because of the circumstance <laughs> yeah but uh i, I like yeah. that the guy's like doesn't it seem awfully soon to be trying to hook your daughter up before her husband's dead right <laughs> he's like oh he could go any day <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we've accepted it <laughs> and uh then we get the dinner scene which is awkward because he's like kind of hitting on lily but also at the same time trying to be respectful to herman mm-hmm. and uh yeah 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 he's like <laughs> he's like i'm so sorry to hear about what's going on with you <laughs> yeah he's like, basically herman's on his deathbed already right and then this is where we have herman and lily take off into the the under the stairs i think it is um is where they go to yeah, talk and- about something yeah the, the they're talking about what this guy the plan and herman's like yeah. i can't go through with it yeah, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, he's like, well, he's supposed to be here for Grandpa to take his heart, and Grandpa wants to feed on him or or drink him. Yeah. And and she's like, are either of those two things happening in our our dining room today? And he, she he waits, and she's like, let me rephrase that. Neither of these things are happening in our dining room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So then they get in there and they they uh, do this rush thing where they're they're trying to get him out of the house like really fast and and it's sort of reminiscent of some like horror movies where you know like the guy is going to be uh, taken advantage of so like the people there are trying to get them out like I've seen it in other vampire things in the past I I just don't recall what but I know I've seen almost the same scenario of like you need to get out now because they're going to kill you type of thing and uh marilyn's rushing him to the door and and um gets out to the door opens the door and what's there demon grandpa demon grandpa uh and she they both scream and then she's like wait grandpa no grandpa you can't kill him no 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 and she ends up pushing him down the freaking dungeon stairs yeah he like uses his powers to open up the staircase to manipulate her into making him fall yeah and and then he just like she looks down the stairs she looks at him and then he looks back at her like what did you do stupid <laughs> he's yeah, he like kinda I just don't shrugs <laughs> eh, it happened um yeah he's like not how i planned it but you know right results yeah yeah so that was fun uh and then at the same time herman is on the roof talking with eddie about what's going on and everything and and it's really good sentiment because eddie's truly does not want to be bad um and she wants to be good even like you said like he said that he's going to be vegetarian uh, pisses grandpa off and stuff like that which yeah, is, grandpa's like you could be vegetarian every day but yeah. once a month 
<laughs> which is uh very interesting too because it's very like what what goes on in some families too like the grandkids are trying to do completely opposite the the grandparents are like well maybe you should teach them better or do this with them or make them you know more of a man or something things like that and i i thought that was kind of what angle they were kind of going with here it's like he needs to be more like you know my side of the family and become a man and do this and do that and that's what he needs to do so i, I that's what i gathered from that part um but then herman falls off the roof <laughs> <laughs> yeah because his heart gives out on him again uh he wakes up to seeing grandpa I forget what eddie says to him that makes him I don't but recall. I think exact... it, he's probably coming clean and Eddie's like, why didn't you just tell me, <laughs> you know, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. This is when he was telling. Yeah. Cause he was telling Eddie, you know, you're the baby bear. You're the wolf. You're the werewolf that was there and uh, everything. So, which um, we didn't say this earlier, but when they were reviving Herman in the lab, or earlier in the episode, Eddie uh-huh. was on the roof placing lightning rods, and that was a really cool yeah. scene. That that yeah. seemed like something reminiscent of the classic show as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so after Herman falls off the roof, we get him in Grandpa's lab, and we just get a glimpse of Grandpa uh, drinking. <laughs> yeah, what is what music is playing? I forget. Oh, some classical, I thought. Yeah. Um. As, as far as I recall, but uh, yeah, he's you see, got like a silly stro- Yeah, you, you, you he's got a one IV going into the fake heart, which is pumping the blood into his mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's drinking the guy. The other guy's chest is like ripped open. Like Grandpa just didn't even surgically do it. He just like ripped it open, and um, has got that uh, going into uh, Herman the heart the actual heart. So I'm assuming he hooked the valves to the fake heart for him to drink the blood. So it would keep pumping it through the body to keep it warm as he was drinking it. Probably. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. But what was the blood doing? Did you notice what the blood did? No, it made him younger looking. Oh, I know. I didn't notice that at all. Yeah, he he cuz throughout the thing like he has got like a lot of wrinkles and stuff like that going on. At the end of the th- episode there, uh where he's drinking the blood, you see his face is a lot clearer and stuff like that. I didn't like any of these scenes cuz like I said that whole set that like okay, the prop is cool that they have for his you know, what they have over top of the actor. Mm-hmm. They just zip up the heart when they're or the chest when they're done. It's it, it's really neat and well done, but home not something I want to see. Like that's a good prop for Halloween. I don't want to see it in motion. <laughs> yeah, uh, we should get to see that in the BTS of like what it actually is and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that was a really cool thing. That's pretty cool. Um, and then right at the end of the episode, we get them talking to Eddie about you know we'll get you a pet the pet will help control your transformation transformation your urges your things like that so so does the pet keep him from transforming or does the pet just guide him so he doesn't do something stupid i i assumed it was gonna guide him keep him out of trouble okay and he's like you know what dog you know i'm just gonna eat the dog what are we t- yeah and uh this is where we get our first or an only appearance of spot um who is what did invisible you think? at first? Yeah, he has a cloaking ability, which is kind of cool. Um, which would actually make a lot of sense too. Mm-hmm. What did you think of of Spot? Uh, it's a really awesome effect. I'll be honest. I I thought it. <laughs> um, I know he's a baby in Rob Zombie's movie, but I thought he looked a lot better in this. Yeah. Well, in Rob Zombie's <laughs> too, he was actually like physically there. Yeah, that yeah, was an yeah. actual puppet it looked like anyways and this one it's just all cg and uh another thing i'm just like how would that have gone if this would have went to air (laughs) well i think that's why they gave him the ability to be invisible (laughs) right (laughs) um you don't have to pay for something that's not there okay so (laughs) 
<laughs> and then oh, that's man. the end. We end with Spot blowing a uh, fireball up in the air. And that's it. That's the end of Mockingbird Lane. Yeah. Um, shall I go first? Um, yeah, well, let me say these things from uh, the BTS. Okay. And, and then you can take that information, too, <clears throat> with your with the rest of the stuff. So in All the right. BTS, Brian Fuller even said, you see them do the monstrous things. Um, so basically everything that they hinted about but never focused on in the original series is what he said that this series was supposed to be about, like showing the monster of, uh, aspect of the family, um, which uh, for me, I thought it took, so what took away from the spirit of the monsters. Um, so, but that's one thing that he said was that was the basis of this was to show the monster activity versus the, necessarily family aspect of it which at that point i'm like why <laughs> don't you know anyways uh-huh. go ahead with your your two cents and then i'll give my two cents so <clears throat> yeah like you were saying it this it it doesn't have the same spirit of the original show the 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 warmth the uh-huh. family together even with herman and grandpa fighting and you know the bickering that herman and lily do every you know, a few episodes it, it, you could tell they do care even w- uh, with the Maryland stuff, you know, she loves her family because she knows they're there for her. Even if they make, you know, rude comments. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just, I don't get that because Eddie idolizes his grandpa in the original show. And this one, he despises him. Yeah. And I'm curious if that would change over time if this had kept going. Uh, so, yeah, I I did not like how they went about the characterization of them. Right. But to Fuller's credit, I would watch more of it. <laughs> okay. Because I did find it interesting, even though these aren't the characters I prefer them to be right. Uh, and I think that that is fully to his credit and, you know, the actors involved as well mm-hmm. is that the, the dialogue, the script and the, the way they portrayed it was so well done that, uh, yeah, I, I, I would watch more. Okay. Yeah. You know, if it had been picked up. Right. Right. Definitely. Um, I guess I'll start off by saying, I guess they got one thing right when they uh, pissed off with the women's screen time on this because they got barely any. So that was almost exact for the original series. Uh. (laughs) Yeah, I would be curious if Marilyn would be good because her whole pushing back at the family makes me think that he had Mm -hmm. things in mind for her. Right. Yeah, I would have been interested to see what would have happened with her character moving forward um, from everything else. But as far as um, the thing itself, so after hearing like what Brian Fuller said, that kind of made me like, uh, you basically kind of took away what the monsters is, unfortunately. It, it's supposed to be a family of monsters who's normal, you know, but they just look different. That that's the whole idea is, you know, they look different and they may act or use different vocab, but they're still everyday people, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and Daniel kind of hit on that too. When we had him on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I truly do feel this could have been a fun show to watch and, and great show. Like, like you said, you would have watched it. I would totally watch this show if it wasn't called The Munsters. That's what I was thinking too. If this was just mm. the characters, you mm-hmm. know, you know, using the universal, not even they don't have to be universal, just generic creatures. Right. Just any any type of weird macabre thing. Yeah, um, you don't really have to do it, and they really drop the ball. I feel because using the Munsters name, I think, is what got such bad reviews of this back then in 2012 
yeah, because it, it, you have like we see it with the Rob Zombie stuff, you know, <laughs> like if you if people are complaining that Rob Zombies is so far from there, like, what do you think they said about this? You know, um, I, I've seen someone saying that this was better than Rob Zombie, which I disagree with. I would prefer Rob it takes Zombie's away approach the entire, any day. This takes away the entire spirit of the original show. Yeah, it's um, monsters in name. It, it, ha- it hints at some of the spirit here and there, like a little mm. bit, but it misses the point. Um, but like they dropped the ball. They could have put a different name on this and called this anything else. And 100%, I would have loved to have watched this show. Yeah, and then you could have had the Munsters cameo in it. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you got to a... just taking like taking the idea of like just Herman even saying, you know, this is like a stereotype. This is offensive to the Frankenberry yeah. thing. Like you could have made a show about, you know, like uh, like them doing stuff like that, you know. And made it an original idea, somewhat original idea, I guess, Uh, you know, and just called it something different. You know, I I I know it's not called the Munsters, it's called Mockingbird Lane, but still. Yeah, well, I think that's for a reason, too. Uh, I I, I do wonder if the plan was to start from here and slowly have them change into, you know, have Grandpa mellow out a bit. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I'm that's the stuff that makes me want to continue watching it to see what the plan would be. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I would see what the plan is. I, like I said, I would have watched this, um, nonstop if, if it was called something different for sure, like easily watched it. And, uh, yeah, I just, that's all I got to say about that, I guess. Yeah. It wasn't a bad show. It was just poorly Themed. named, poorly advertised, poorly marketed as Oops. something it should not have been. Yeah. Um. Sorry about that. My alarm went off. Oh, you're fine. And uh, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, do you have any, like anything else on this one for trivia uh, or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I got We uh, did the BTS too, so I got some trivia here. Um some of which we already mentioned like uh this was aired as a Halloween special. Um mm. you could actually see the original Munster house in the background while Grandpa and Marilyn are walking down the road with the plate of cookies. Okay. Uh it had obviously been redone probably for um desperate housewives by now yeah so but it is in the background so that's interesting um i mentioned that herman runs on mac os <laughs> yeah uh this uh so al lewis's grandpa was kind of a parody of um oh boy let's see if i can say this. bella lugosi's bella lugosi yes yeah uh whereas this one they wanted to parody more of gary oldman Okay, I can see that from the direct. Uh, what was it called? The I, I don't remember the exact name of that one, but yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um. So I got a quote here from Ch- NBC Chief Robert Greenblatt. <laughs> okay. Probably said that wrong. <clears throat> on why they decided to pass on the series. Okay. We just decided that it didn't hold together well enough to yield a series. It looked beautiful, which it did, and original and creative, but it just all ultimately didn't come together. It just didn't ultimately creatively all work. We felt great about the cast, but we tried to make it not just a sitcom. We tried to make it an hour, which ultimately has more dramatic weight than a half hour. It's hard to calibrate how much weirdness versus supernatural versus family story. I just think we didn't get the mix right. And I can agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, You need something. If you were going to do like a longer somewhat with drama ish in it, I guess you'd say you needed to do something like scrubs. 
like with the way that they level it out with drama and comedy and all that. Yeah. yeah Bill, La- <clears throat> Bill Lawrence is just, he is the sitcom genius. I'm telling uh, <clears throat> you. Yeah, no, that's a, I, I can agree. It definitely is not leveled out. It, they didn't know what they were really doing a whole lot of. And mm-hmm. uh, they lost the, like, like, the dude literally says in the documentaries or not documentaries, but the BTS, like, you know, I, we were just trying to make them more monstrous. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you're trying to show the monster part of the family. And I'm like, that's not what the monsters is. I, I, granted. Yes, they are monsters. Granted. Yes. We do get those gags in the, the conversation of like, Oh, grandpa, digs up people he killed all of his wives things like that random stuff you know but we don't need to see that i think that's what made the og monsters better is because you get more of the family aspect and you're driven by things that you you as a human normal person can mm-hmm. relate to you know i can't yeah, relate I think- to <laughs> going around killing someone and taking their heart <laughs> uh, mind controlling people with my blood but that's why, again, I think, you know, you rename this something completely different. Go yeah. ahead with the show and do it as an original show and not s- trying to dive on the name of something else. Yeah. You know, and, and like I, that kind of goes into why I would want to see more of it just to see if they could get that mix better as they went. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it got a 5.47 million viewers the night it aired. Um, that's not a lot for 2012. No, it gained a 1.5 rating share for the age, uh, adults, 18 to 49, mm-hmm. which, you know, it, there could be worse, you know, uh, NBC confirmed ordering the pilot episode in November of 2011 and announced in January, 2012, that it would be called mockingbird lane. Uh, the costumes and makeups for the character were heavily toned down to have more closely resem- or have them more closely resembling humans, which, I mean, I didn't mind that aspect. I, I thought I would dislike it more than I actually did. So, yeah. So, so would you say that it was actually mocking bird lane? <laughs> I'm going to ignore that and do my last note here. <laughs> so on March 20th, 2012, uh, former the Richie star Eddie Izzard was announced as playing grandpa. Uh, British actress Charity Wakefield had joined the cast as Marilyn. Uh, uh, Mason Cook also joined on June 4th, is when they announced Jerry O'Connell, mm. uh, had been cast as the patriarch. And that the series would be written by Fuller. Okay. So they didn't have that together until... So March is when they had the cast and the writer on board. Um, let's see. Uh, Fuller describes Herman as essentially... Oh, I'm sorry. Fuller had signed on before then. This is a quote about Herman. Okay. Uh, he described Herman as essentially a zombie in a constant state of decay, which I think, yeah, that's kind of how he was presented. Was he though? He wasn't really decaying. Yeah. Uh, the day after it was announced that Mer- Mariana uh, Clav- Clavano had been cast as Lily contingent on her being released from her contract on devious maids however in uh just seven days later uh, a full week uh they had recast the role to uh, uh the version we saw okay so clearly she couldn't get out of devious maids <laughs> which i believe bill lawrence may have worked on okay so I'm not a hundred percent, but I think he might have done like an episode for that show. Right. Um, so Brian Fuller too, for people who don't know him, he's, uh, he's in charge of a lot. 
uh, he created Pushing Daisies, which I'm surprised that with the tone of that show, he didn't go more for that with this one. Yeah. You know. Um, well, that may have been Singer's direction as well. Yeah, yeah. Or even the studio. <laughs> like We want it to be yeah. completely different <laughs> because we don't know our product. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway... <laughs> Uh, he he created pushing daisies and 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 shows like that. He he did stuff like uh, uh, dead like me and all that crap. That which, was good. I like that. Yeah. So there's a that comedy with the macabre right there. Um. So you, you would think that they'd be able to do something where you can mix in the comedy a little bit better here. But again, it, when you're touching a product that has so much history to it already, um, because by this time you had two whole TV shows, uh, what, four movies? Two yep. whole TV shows and four movies. And, and uh, the documentaries were all out by now. Documentaries plus, um, geez, like all the cons and stuff like that and all that crap. Like, you're not getting away from fans, unfortunately, when you go into doing a massive change. It would be like making a Friday the 13th film, <laughs> but making it so Jason doesn't kill anyone and just brings them roses. Yeah, this was the <laughs> <laughs> this was the first Munsters product in kind of the new community type environment with fandoms. Mm -hmm. Cuz you know, 2012 conventions were fully established by now. We definitely had the internet. Uh <clears throat> Yeah. So it, it it's interesting to see these older shows that were kind of more word of mouth and group of friends and water cooler things. Yeah. Enter in to this new age fandom. Yeah. I can see that for sure. And, and you know, they had it the hardest and again, it still is mocking bird lane. <laughs> I'm not going to let that one go. I should use that for the advertising. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways you got yeah six days till this releases so i i enjoyed this um for what it is but not for a monsters product unfortunately like i, I enjoyed the story like i i would have liked to see more building on to the story just take away the monster's name call him something else mm -hmm. change the name of the road they're on let's go do that yeah you know um but that's my my final thought on it like any final words on like your main thoughts and opinions and stuff? Uh, it kind of just echoing what you've already said. Yeah. You know? it, it, I would have liked to have seen more, but also this is not the monsters that I want to see. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I can see that for sure with everybody. And uh, let us know everyone out there too. Like if you've watched this, or just listen to us describe some of the things in there. Like, what do you think about the show? Like, do you think it would have been a good Munsters product? Or do you think it would have been a good show outside of uh, the, the title, the names and stuff of the Munsters? Like, its own original thing. Yeah, or do you think it just would have been a piece of shit show in the first place? Because I know there's probably people out there that thought so. Was there an aspect to the show that you would have liked to have seen them develop more on? Kind of like what I was saying with Marilyn. Mm -hmm. uh, like, obviously, this is something that we will never see come to fr fr fruition, fruition. But uh, just the idea of where it could have gone can be exciting in itself. Yeah. I mean, we've done that a lot with our our other show, um, Operation Babel, when we did the uh, all those Marvel movies that started out as a pilot movie for a show that never ended up getting picked up. Mm -hmm. And um, that that's half the fun with some of these uh, things that didn't land immediately, but had something that was of potential. Right. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. There's, there's always those things, and, and this, I think, is going to come back, too. It's going to be one of those lost things that Munster fans will like, just 
as long as they're watching it separate from not thinking it's going to be the monsters you know yeah um it's a different it's completely different iteration when you talk about different iterations or monster verse and shit like that like in, in, in a way i'm glad this exists because somebody attempted to do it so now we don't have people for the next you know 100 years being like what if they do the darker grittier yeah. version yeah yeah we've seen that and it doesn't what if they do out? the monsters like the adams family why don't they just do that? Um, Why don't they just make them like the actual universal creatures? We could, you know, just do that. Oh, could you imagine if this show would have popped off and like people would have, you know, been into this show growing up just watching this one, not the original stuff. And they go back and, and see like Herman is actually a Frankenstein monster and then be like, the hell is this? It, doesn't need to be an actual Frankenstein monster. The yeah. whole point was, you know, that you, they were trying oh, to get away from stereotypes. Oh, there would be so many people who didn't even know it had an original iterate, uh, you know, yeah. a version. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Be like, oh, this, they stole this idea 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, yeah. I, I, again, just watch it if you haven't watched it just to experience it and see what you think for yourselves it is not because terrible. it's one of those it's not a terrible product it, it truly isn't it's just when you're comparing it to the monsters that we all know and love mm -hmm. then it gets into the okay this is kind of not what i signed up for you know yeah. and and that's one of the things too is that this is why we did this for our halloween episode um because it, it is on the more darker side and everything. Uh, because um, if we didn't do, do this this week for Halloween, um, we would have done what we're doing next week, which is actually a Halloween movie, too. Um, so both of these came out around Halloween time. Uh, this one came out October 26, 2012. Next week, what are we talking about, Divis? Here come the monsters. Yeah, which aired on Halloween in 1995. Um, so we'll be talking about Here Come the Monsters. That is the one where the original cast members actually do come back into it. Minus and Fred Gwynn. Rest minus peace. Fred, who has passed already. Um, so they all come back into it, not as their characters, but as uh, cameos and stuff. So um, well, I'm excited to watch it because we'll I have never, I've never watched it all the way through. I've seen clips, but I've never watched it all the way through. This is the movie that warped my child mind into thinking the original show was colored. Uh, <laughs> so I'm excited to revisit it because, as I've said before, this is what originally stoked my interest in everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, with that said, guys, also don't forget to check out the monstercast.com for us and, uh, Go over there, find all of our fun stuff. Hopefully, we're going to be adding more and more content. And like I said, if you do want to watch these, um, this uh, uh, TV show that we watched, the episode that we watched here, if you cannot find it online, we do have it on our Discord. It's going to be through patreon.com slash themonstercast. And you can get onto our Discord that way to find it. And it's not just going to be this. We are going to put other stuff on there as well um that is hard to find so uh definitely check it out if you want to just you know support us and see this product or you know just want to support us <laughs> or talk to us on a daily basis because you probably get a lot quicker response from tivis if you just message him through discord <laughs> potentially yeah potentially so uh definitely check that out guys and then uh go on over to the monstercast.com slash merch pick up a shirt that we designed specifically for you guys the monster cast fans and monsters fans alike um, uh, don't forget to leave us a review tell a friend mm -hmm. like all that stuff really helps the show definitely and uh if you guys want to see our pretty ugly faces head on over to the youtube channel themonstercast.com and uh like we said at the beginning too email us monstercast at outlook.com the monster cast sorry <laughs> at outlook.com ev hope everyone enjoys halloween we hope you guys have a great halloween happy halloween 2022 it can only get better right <laughs>
what part? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, anyways, with that said, Tivis, any final words for today's episode? I am looking forward to next week. <laughs> awesome. With that said, guys, uh, we appreciate you and thank you for all the the comments and contact that you have with us. Oh, Tivis has one more thing. Don't forget to check out our Halloween special of Operation Babel. Yes, go over there, Operation Babble, um, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can find it on the Mike Shrews YouTube channel. So uh, go on over there and check it out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys, all of you. We appreciate you. And uh, with that said, we will catch you next time as we take another stroll down 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Mockingbird Lane. Lane. <laughs>